Hey everybody, Chris Adams here again, uh, going over my picks for Indiana Grand. Uh, today looking at uh, Tuesday's card, August 24th, 2021. Uh, if you want to follow my picks uh, at Indiana Grand and any other track, you can follow me on Twitter at HandicappingT3, uh, or you can uh, read up online at bettingnews.com where I'm the horse racing contributor. Uh, this week I will actually be focusing on Wednesday's card from Indiana Grand. So um, you can actually get get kind of a written version of what I do here um, at bettingnews.com uh, this Wednesday for Indiana Grand's Wednesday card. Um, so just some ways to get a hold of me there uh, if you wish. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. Uh, I did not have a great day on Monday, as you can see, uh, and I did talk about some of the other winners um, in the video, uh, but I did not have them on my pick sheet. Uh, again, these are computer generated. Um, when I actually play, sometimes I will add something in if I see something on the tote board. So I was a lot closer uh, with my wagers than some of this would suggest, but uh, still kind of a rough day. Um, and I think a lot of that had to do with the bias, uh, which I'll talk about in just a minute. So uh, these are my T3 grids. Uh, green means that the horse won. Yellow means they came in second. And red means that they came in third. So you can see plenty of first and seconds. Uh, one thing that I did find uh, that was extremely helpful is uh, when I see th uh, three in a row, it's actually why I call these T3 grids, because um, tic-tac-toe, T3. Um, so when you see three in a row, I will often use them as a win play show ladder, as well as a key in uh, exactas and trifectas. And you can see that in almost every instance where we did have three in a row, so you had the three here, um, the six was kind of the exception to the rule today. You had a diagonal tic-tac-toe there. Um, even though this one was a pretty uh, narrow board, you did not have any tic-tac-toes. Uh, so that one didn't really apply. You had the two, the one with a tic-tac-toe right here. Um, and then this last race was the quarters. Uh, and you did not have a tic-tac-toe anywhere on this board either. So um, you can see that the board uh, maybe wasn't super consistent in terms of hitting like the trifecta, um, but at the same time, uh, figuring out which horses to key in on, um, it definitely served its purpose there. Now, one of the reasons why I think that my Monday was so rough at Indiana Grand had to do with a big change in bias. So originally, the bias report that I was using yesterday showed that early speed uh, was definitely where you wanted to be in most environments. Um, but it kind of, I had kind of alluded to in yesterday's video that I felt like maybe it was starting to shift um, towards uh, late runners uh, or at least stocking types. And you can see looking at the last four uh, race days from Indiana Grand, you can see definitely those dirt sprints, those, those leading horses aren't winning anymore. Um, all of the races are now being won by these stalker types. Uh, same thing on the dirt routes. When there is a bias presented, it's coming from those stalker positions. Uh, turf sprints, we haven't really had a lot. Uh, some early speed there and stalking. Those are both one race samples, so not real huge. Um, but then you can see also here, you almost need to be off the pace in order to win in the turf routes. So uh, those are some things that I uh, have discovered over the last couple of days that hopefully will help now as I've made some adjustments for Tuesday's selection. So let's jump into Tuesday's selections uh, and see what we've got. So I'm going to pull up my past performances. Let me grab these guys. All right. So we've now got our past performances up on screen. Once again, I do use the Brisnet numbers. I have updated my pace numbers to match. Um, this first one, uh, the early part of the card is really tricky. So there's a lot of maiden races. Um, and especially these like low level state bred maiden claimers are really tough. So um, I've got my strikes in red. I've got my letter grades from the uh, Gabe report uh, in blue. And then I've got uh, any... Um, bias indicators. I did not uh, circle any of the the post positions um, just because I'm finding that given the field sizes at Indiana Grand, they're just kind of not really, I'm often ignoring them. So I just decided not to mark them up, but you will notice uh, that I did mark up the running styles. So um, as we go through here, we'll just start with race day ready. Now race day ready is 12 to one on the morning line. He is a second time starter, but you can see uh, second career race 
uh, is only 9% for the trainer, so I'm not super interested in that. Um, so we'll move on. Uh, ship shape is the favorite. I'm a little nervous about this early speed here. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something I want to play given the way that uh, things have been going, uh, but he does have the second best prime power. He's really done nothing wrong other than the fact that he's had a lot of opportunities and lost. I'm still going to use um, this gelding as an A horse. Uh, this horse, Prince Act here, uh, 12 to 1 for uh, Santos Anger. Uh, I, I did originally have him grading out as a C with three strikes, um, but I ended up not using him only because I, I looked at this 48, and if he runs this 48, which right now is his best on dirt, I just don't think he's going to get where he needs to be uh, to beat this field. Uh, proof of that is here in the four at five to two. You can see the last four speed figures are all above that 48. So uh, with no strikes, a B letter grade uh, on the five to two. Again, I'm not thrilled with the E because it seems like the front runners are kind of stopping uh, the last few days. So uh, successfully done also has zero strikes, came out with an A grade. Uh, he is an E type as well. So something to be a little bit weary of. Um, but at the same time, zero strikes, and so he gets an A grade, lightly raced, uh, and that 66 number uh, should have this field uh, pretty well over a barrel if he can get back there. Uh, this horse, Stand and Serve, is an EP type, which is supposed to be the kind of horses that we like, um, but I question if this horse is really an EP as I look at where the horse is at each call and where they finish. Uh, to me, this horse almost looks like an S type down here. So uh, the horse graded out to be an A horse. I'm not really sure how confident I'm feeling in that. So I actually ended up marking this horse down a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go heavily through the two and five. That ship shape and successfully done. Those are the two top choices on the board. Um, I'll use ship, uh, stand and serve as a little bit of a longer shot in a in a B type, uh, and mostly doing that. Um, because it only came out to the two strikes. Uh, but again, maiden claimers, weird things happen. Uh, and then I did have Hickory High, but given that that horse is only five to two, I probably will just end up completely leaving that horse off my ticket, maybe using underneath and some things, um, and just trying to stick with kind of the two, five, six. Race number two, more maiden claimers, more state breads. Um, so we've got five and a half furlongs uh, on the dirt. Again, expecting some uh, different things. Uh, now the stocking post or the stocking run style has been the best one. So these deep closers have not been super successful. Um, I've got motion to adjourn coming in with four strikes and graded out as a C initially. Uh, it's hard at nine to five. I don't love using him as a C grade, um, but he's he's in there nevertheless. Uh, I've got the number two in the event. Again, I'm worried about that early speed just stopping as it has the last couple of days two strikes. I'm not going to use him in this case. Uh, you know, by not using him at five to two, using him deeper down the ticket at nine to five, I should get some extra juice in this ticket. So uh, this horse, again, coming from way out of it, uh, that's going to be trouble, um, has two strikes against. So I'm going to pass four firing range to uh, two starts did improve from first to second only has one strike. So I'm going to move him in as a B grade. At seven to two, Boot Daddy Justice, early speed type, a little worried again about the stopping. Um, two strikes, I'll give him a C grade. Uh, I really like that he had a 39 here, but he bumps the start, angled out, and then closed. Um, so maybe getting out uh, a little bit cleaner might help him out today. Uh, this guy is an NA0 Travel and Justice. Um, and you'll see that uh, he actually... Uh, went down in form in his second start, which is a big no-no for me. So he's uh, he's off the board. And then my uh, the horse that I really kind of like here is Time to Confess. Uh, he's only got one strike against. He did grade out as an A. Uh, he's going to get to carry uh, the bug weight, which is kind of nice. Um, I don't love the last race, but you can see he was bumped after the start. If we go back to this 53, um, comparing that to the rest of the field, uh, that 53 is the best speed figure in the race. So um, if I can get six to one on the top speed figure, I will take that. Um, he is an early speed type, but he is only an E3. Um, and so maybe he doesn't need to be like right on the lead. I'm going to go with seven. I'll put the four one in sort of the second positions. And I will finish up my picks with the five horse, uh, which is uh, Boot Daddy Justice. 
Um, so that is uh, that race. Again, kind of my big stand there is against the two in the event. Our next race, uh, we're going to get into slightly better group of horses here. Uh, we've got uh, optional claimers going six furlongs. I've got the number one. He's got a good run style. Uh, he's only got one strike. He's going to get an A grade. Number two, same thing. Uh, good run style, one strike. We'll give him a B letter grade uh, on the Gabe report. Good run style, two strikes, A grade for Trap Valley. Uh, out of Trap Shot there. Uh, this horse, again, good run style, uh, only one strike, an A. Uh, B Trouble, e, uh, E8, e just absolutely gun for the lead. Uh, that has not been working, so despite the two strikes, I'm not using them. Uh, again, I just watched every single horse on the lead today, completely dead stop, uh, and I'm just not convinced uh, that the track is playing to that as it was early in the meet. Here we've got uh, another good uh, runner, but he does have the three strikes against, so I'm going to take a stand, seven to two. Uh, hopefully I can get a little bit of value in my horizontals that way. And then here I've got a deep closer uh, in a six furlong sprint, which isn't great. Three strikes, just not good enough uh, for me in this situation. So I'm going to play most of my tickets through the one. Uh, that's the uh, Game Boy Benny uh, at four to one. I really like the way he runs. Um, He's, he's one you'll see a lot. Uh, he keeps coming back at Indiana Grand. I've got Trap Valley at 9-2 to two in the second spot. And then underneath, I'll use Naughty Alfred and um, I'll use uh, Diatante as my other one. So I'll go four deep in that, but again, most heavily going through the one and playing a little bit on the three as well. Race number four, uh, six furlongs, Philly uh, claimers, 10,000 non-winners of two. Um, and so as we go through this race, again, we've got that E run style that I just, I don't care for right now. Only one strike, but I'm not going to use, uh, I've got assess easy silence. Who's uh, got a good run style and no strikes. Uh, this one is not currently graded out to anything, but given that it has the proper run style and no strikes, I am going to add uh, to my selections. Cold run style, two strikes, uh, not going to use. Uh, this one, uh, I kind of adjusted the run style, but still three strikes, not going to use. I've got the five, don't mind me. One strike only, so I'm going to take it as an A horse. I'm hoping that the recent form since switching barns uh, is going to be enough to get me there because, again, I am a little worried about the front running style. Uh, Bellerific also only has one strike and an A. Uh, if it gets back to the 79 uh, that it ran uh, in its maiden claiming race at Indiana, uh, that could be a uh, real trouble for the rest of the field. And then uh, Spanish Peaks is even money for San uh, Santos Sanger. Uh, this 81, obviously, if it finds this race, it's going to win. If it finds most of these races, it's going to win. So um, you're definitely going to want to play the seven on top. I would use the two uh, as a possibility in some of your underneath, um, but I would go with uh, Spanish Peaks first, then I would come back to Don't Mind Me, who has the more recent uh, form, and then uh, Bellerific, and I would use the two underneath at eight to one, uh, coming off eight days rest to, uh, to try and spice things up. I don't know that the two will win the race, um, but I'm a little nervous about the fact that all of my uh, top selections are going to be toward the front, even though they seem superior on paper. As we come down to race number five, we're going to get to a turf route. These have been won by the deep closers. Um, if you watched the last thoroughbred race uh, where the three came uh, skimming up the rail on Monday, uh, came from way out of it to get there. So uh, there is no problem with being deep back in this. And our favorite is this uh, Malibu Moira, who is... Uh, only one strike and gets an A grade. Uh, the two horse here uh, is in a positive run style. I think more like an S when you look at how this horse wins deep off the pace, but still three strikes, not going to use. Uh, you've got some cold run styles here in both the stocking and the mid packers. Uh, five strikes, just not worth my time. You've got air turbulence, uh, three strikes, you're out. Uh, coming from deep out of it, which has been a good run style. Uh, you've got two to one. Uh, two strikes, C grade, but I'm not overly thrilled with the horse. Don't love the run style on the six, um, but with the two strikes, gets a B letter grade. Um, and so I'm going to be pretty thin here. I'm going to really try and hammer the favorite, uh, Malibu Moira. 
and I'll use the six um, long-legged Laverne and the number five uh, Mox Tough, um, probably in some savers. Probably when it comes down to um, actually betting this race, I'm probably going to go pretty cold, uh, just ice cold one into six uh, and hope to get it that way. So uh, that's how I'm going to play the fifth. Sixth race, we're going a mile on turf, so another turf route, cold run style, six strikes, 30 to one. Not a lot to like there. Uh, on the Prince, good run style, only one strike. B will be moving up in class today, which is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, good run style, three strikes. I'm going to leave him on as a B grade um, because I like the run style, and uh, he grades out in a lot of my categories. So I'm really interested in this three criminal defense. Leave it to Kitten, S-type, which is good. Four strikes, not going to take him. Authoritarian is the favorite. Four strikes, early run style, moving up in class. Um, to me, this is a race where you want to play against the favorite. You're going from the maiden claiming ranks into the claiming ranks. Um, I, I, if Authoritarian goes off as the favorite, this might be the race I put the most money into because I'm not going to be using this horse um, on my tickets. And if he be, if he beats me, he beats me. That's fine. Um, I've got a couple of cold runners here, one with three strikes that I'm not using. The seven changing lanes, uh, one strike but a B grade, so I will use there. Galileo Rock speed type hasn't been great. Four strikes, not worth my time. Uh, in this race, I'm going to be very heavily into the three uh, criminal defense. I will use the two. I'm the prince at three to one, uh, probably pretty strongly on the backup line. And then changing lanes is going to be sort of my nice long shot that I'm going to really use to try and uh, get some extra extra juice if I can, uh, especially in those horizontals. So I uh, may even move that one up to a B just because I think the value will be there uh, spending the extra capital. Uh, race number seven, five for a long state bird allowance, non-winners of three lifetime. The one is even money, good run style, one strike, an A. Uh, the two, uh, Denang, nine to two, zero strikes, A grade. A couple of cold streakers here, one with six strikes, just not going to use that. Two strikes, I'll give them a chance with a B. Uh, and then uh, prep for prepare for glory, two strikes, I'll give a B. Uh, good run style, three strikes, um, but I'm not going to use there. Just think it's a little up against it in this spot. Uh, EP here, uh, which is good, that stocking position, two strikes, C letter grade. Uh, in this race, I'm going to end up going pretty deep. You can see 30 to 1. Uh, I don't know how likely this horse is to win. It's been a while since the horse won. We've got to go all the way back to August of 2020. If the horse cycles around each year, it might be worth a, a very deep play. But I think I'm going to be most heavily uh, in this race looking to go through probably the 1-2, uh, the even money. And then uh, I might have just a really thin ticket coming through the 2 uh, because if I can get around that even money shot, um, that should really help. I've got the four, five, seven. These are going to be mostly used underneath um, in different vertical exotics. Moving on to race number eight, we're going a mile on the turf. This is the last uh, thoroughbred event. The ninth race is going to swing over to their quarter program. So uh, we're going to close out here the thoroughbred portion with a mile on the turf. Um, so again, we're looking for those deep closers. Uh, who have been so successful on the Indiana turf so far. You can see these two horses are both uh, stalking early, so we're going to uh, pitch them out. Uh, two strikes, five strikes, doesn't matter, just not using them. This horse is going to come from farther out of it, which is positive, only one strike, so we're going to use an A on that. I've got a stalking horse here uh, with five strikes, I'm not going to use him. I've got a mid-pack horse uh, with only one strike. Uh, I'm going to kind of, I've got an X on him as a toss, uh, but the five is one I'm going to probably try and keep on side. Coming from out of it, only one strike. Even though the computer doesn't say to use this horse, I think I'm going to. Uh, then I've got a, a stalker with one um, with one strike. Uh, he's got an A grade. Uh, a stalker with two strikes. He is off the board. Uh, an E type, we're looking at early speed. You've got three strikes there, so I'm not going to use him. Uh, again, a stalker with four strikes, not using. Nice deep closer, three strikes, but I will use him down at the very bottom, especially at 30 to 1. And then uh, a cold run style with the four strikes, not going to use there. And then our final horse in the in the roster right now is uh, a stalker, 
three strikes and no go. So here you can see uh, I'm most heavily through the number six, uh, which is Evil Eye at five to two. I think he's a pretty good uh, shot um, to win this race. And then if not him, I like the risky. I like Risky Town, the number three. After that, uh, these horses, uh, you're probably talking a C horse in uh, horizontals. Um, I might spice it up with a couple of these, especially, like I said, that five. Uh, I really like uh, kind of where he sits and think he could spring it an upset. So I would maybe be inclined to move him up into a C grade for the purposes of horizontals. Um, but otherwise, I'll use him underneath in my verticals mostly there. So uh, this concludes the Tuesday card from Indiana Grand. Eight races uh, with the ninth going then to the quarter horses there. Um, so good luck with all of your plays at Indiana. Again, if you want plays for Wednesday, um, you can check back. I'll post another video for Wednesday. Uh, or you can uh, read my article uh, starting today on betting news um, about my selections for uh, Wednesday's card at Indiana Grand. Um, good luck to all of you, and uh, I hope you cash a lot of tickets today.